Hey. Hey. Ronnie. Lou. <laughs> that was a little different open, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, you're going to die Thursday. Ooh, you know what? Thursday's not good. Can we push it back to Friday? Well, what day of the week are you most likely to die? We'll find out next on Men Are So Smart. Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. New research published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology shows that hospital-bound patients are likely to die on the weekend. That sucks. If you've ever visited a friend or family in the hospital and felt as though patients weren't quite as completely looked after on nights and weekends as they are on weekdays, you're not just imagining things. Yeah. Uh, New research published... Uh, shows that at least people in the hospital, your chances of dying significantly increase on Saturday and Sunday, a phenomenon doctors call the weekend effect. Tell me more. Theoretically, this shouldn't be the case. Hospitals run 24-7 because you can't exactly schedule a hernia uh, or heart attack or, you know, the whole reason doctors have shifts is to ensure that people get the best possible care no matter the hour, day, Sadly, however, this doesn't seem to be the case. A 2008 study found that the likelihood of dying from a heart attack in the hospital is higher on nights and weekends, even when adjusted for variables. Ten years later, it seems that while things have gotten a little better, it's an issue that persists d- despite an overall improvement in survival, <clears throat> lower survival in IHCA, in-house cardiac arrest, during off hours compared with on hours persists. Mm. Uh, we're able to point out that the problem exists without really having a great insight as to why. Uh, Dr. Seth Goldstein, a pediatric surgeon follow, fellow at John Hopkins Hospital, told CNN having conducted his own research that found children admitted to the hospital on weekends for surgeries had a lower survival rate and a greater risk of complications. Wow. Uh, He theorized that perhaps it was because people who come in on nights and weekends tend to be in more critical condition, uh, as that is when people are most liable to experience alcohol-related injuries, not so much with children, Uh, But he also admitted that hospitals may simply be more understaffed and doctors more tired during off hours. The number of patients that we're responsible for at any one time is higher during the less desirable shifts, the doctor said. It's more difficult in the hospital to get laboratory values, x-rays done, EKGs performed at night than it is during the day. According to stats... Between 44,000 and 98,000 hospitalized Americans die each year as a result of preventable medical errors. If we want to bridge this gap, then we need to have a serious overhaul of how our hospitals function. Now, I can tell you from experience, I had my surgery on August 3rd of last year. By August 7th, I was back in the hospital with infections. And I can tell you that I went in to the emergency room for a fever, about 101.7 or so. It was high, not exceedingly high. But I went in at 7 o'clock at night, and I spent the whole night in emergency. And they could not tell me anything. They didn't know. They didn't know it was wrong. They were doing all kinds of stuff. CAT scans and MRIs and all of these different things. And I got to tell you, I felt like every doctor that I saw there was incompetent. Yeah. They contradicted one another. Um, well, I'm just saying that I think the service at nighttime is inferior. And I know for a fact because I was in the hospital for four days. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I'm sure that staffing a hospital is a lot like staffing any other 24 seven job and that the people with the most seniority 
have nights and weekends off. Yeah. And the people with the most seniority typically are going to be the best people there. So it really shouldn't be a big surprise to anybody that there are a lot of interns and or newer doctors and nurses working the crummy or less desirable shifts. And you got to figure that if a person is not feeling well during the day, they're likely to go to their general practitioner. Right. Whereas they don't have that option at night. So the only alternative would be the emergency room at night. So I don't know. Well, and also when you think about your higher risk activities that you're going to do, they don't come here during your eight to five Monday through Friday job. Most for most of us, uh, they're going to happen on the after hours when you get home and your wife and you decide to go out for a bicycle ride or during the weekends when you go to a, a theme park or whatever it is, you're you're more susceptible to being injured, you know, doing something other than sitting behind a desk. Yeah. Uh, you know, at this point, I would just love to say that um, I had some excellent, superior nurses uh, at the hospital where I was in Roseville. And I always said that I wanted to go back and thank them, and I never did. I feel bad about that. Well, and, and I don't want to make excuses and say that we all get busy, but we do. Uh, but I would... Uh, nurses are incredible human beings. Yeah. They truly are. And what they do... I could not be a nurse. It's remarkable. I don't have the, the amount of empathy or compassion needed to... When you think about how much compassion they share with each patient yeah times 15 or however many they have on the floor yeah that's i mean it takes a special person yeah thank you for men are so smart we yep. appreciate it all right so speaking of hospital stays yes hey ronnie <laughs> wait we already did that yeah uh hey right no um let's take the tide pod challenge yeah here eat one of these okay let me have one <laughs> you know, it used to be a punishment to, uh, <laughs> this is way better than a Tide Pod right here. Yeah. That's a maple bar. <laughs> Let's do the maple bar challenge. <laughs> I would do that yeah, one. Yeah, that's yes. no problem. Yeah. All right. Procter & Gamble says it's working to stop the Tide Pod challenge, a social media fueled trend in which teenagers eat a single load laundry detergent pack. You know what? If they made them look like asparagus. No one would eat them. No one would eat them. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the American Association of Poison Control Centers warned last week that it had seen a spike in teenagers eating the detergent pods, which it says can cause seizures, respiratory arrest, and even death. Wow. That's like the top of the heap right there. Uh, CEO David Taylor called the trend dangerous and extremely concerning in an online post Monday. He said the company is working with social media companies to remove videos of people biting into the detergent Done. and asked adults to speak with children about the hazards. Uh, let them know that their life and health matter more than clicks, views, and likes. Not to us. No. No, we, yeah. we need the clicks, views, and... If there were a Tide Pod here, I'd eat it uh, right uh, now Sure, you bet. In fact, you know what? Likes. Maybe we'll do the next show <laughs> naked. Yes. Well, that's probably, yeah. In the first 15 days of this year, Poison Control Center said that they have handled 39 cases of intentional misuse among 13 to 19-year-olds. Poison Control Centers handled 53 such cases for all of last year. The pods have generally been a hit for Procter & Gamble, which also makes Crest toothpaste and Charmin toilet paper. Have you heard the commercials, the new commercials for Charmin toilet paper? I don't think so. Um... Oh, my hiney is so soft and shiny. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, Sorry. A good, that's a good ad campaign right uh, there. The company posted <laughs> quarterly revenue Tuesday of $17.4 billion and fiscal second quarter net income of $2.5 billion. Its results topped Wall Street expectations. Yes. Uh, Procter & Gamble has faced safety issues with Tide Pods before, Shortly after they were introduced in 2012, the company announced that it would create a double latch lid to defer young children from ex uh, accessing and eating the detergent packets. Uh, 
Some children mistook the brightly colored one-inch pods for candy. To deter teenagers, P&G released a 20-second video of football player Rob Gronkowski earlier this month telling viewers not to ingest the pods. What the heck is going on, people, he said in the video. Use Tide Pods for washing, not eating. I've seen the video. It's Thank good. God somebody explained that The to voice us. of reason finally has come out. A New York City pizzeria even launched Pied Pods <laughs> because of the trend offering rolls stuffed with cheese and pepperoni and topped with dyed cheese to make it look like a detergent pod. Okay, now this is ridiculous, though. I saw a donut shop, and it was somewhere back east. They had taken a glazed donut, and on the top, they put the little orange and, and blue. the blue swirl on there and made it look like a giant Tide Pod. And there was so much outrage on the Internet that they would do that. I'm like, okay, first of all, the people eating these Tide Pods, they're teenagers, and they know what the heck they're eating. Yeah. It's not like they're... Oh, this is the biggest Tide Pod I've ever seen. Right. I'm going to eat this. No. People know the difference between a Tide Pod and a donut. Or a maple bar. Or a maple bar. Nobody is eating these Tide Pods by accident. No. They're eating them on purpose. So my my response was, well, if they have to outlaw making donuts that look like Tide Pods, they should also have to outlaw cookies that look like dogs. Because nobody wants somebody walking into your house and eating your dog because he thought it was a cookie. I'm just saying. I see that. It could happen. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, parenting, peer pressure. That's what it is. That's the bottom line. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut through the crap like that. But... Well, and thankfully we have Gronk as the voice of reason here, which has never happened before. <laughs> and may never happen again. No, in fact, my son went to school with Gronk. He really? Was, yeah, he's from University of Arizona. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, he's a big boy. He's a big tell boy. You and he was a fun-loving kid in uh, in college, apparently. Probably down a few Tide Pods himself. Might have. Maybe he speaks of experience. <laughs> I don't know, kids. Look, don't eat the green ass. Wait, no, that's not it. That's from our generation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't eat the Tide Pods. Okay? Right. Next thing you know... Your mom's going to be needing to wash some clothes, and she's not going to have any detergent. Right. And then where are you? Well, this all you goes got back dirty to, clothes. Remember when washing your mouth out with soap was a punishment? Yeah. Whatever yeah. happened to that? Like you know, from Christmas Story. Yeah. With with Life Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah. Mm. Kids be cray cray. Cray cray today. <laughs> Tell you what. All right. So uh, there you go. There's our story about death and dismemberment. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Not so much on the dismemberment. Maybe but... we'll call it for your help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that'll wrap up, up another episode of Men Are So Smart. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed our little fun time here together. We do it for you uh, every day. Yep. And uh, we're glad to do it. And we hope that you'll tell your friends. Share the video. If you got a kick out of it, share the video. That's how we get the word out. Give it a thumbs up. If you could, Ronnie and I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to our channel so much we have some goals in place for 2018 and the only way that we can attain those goals is through you yep so thank you very much for watching if you would like any further information on either one of us uh, or both of us together whatever the case may be our facebook page our twitter our instagram whatever facebook you can find it below also, our blogs, we'd love to have you read them. Yep. I've been writing a heck of a lot of them. I got yeah, some I got I written that I haven't even posted yet. You got a lot in the bank. I got it going on. Yeah. Tell you what. Uh, so, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we will see you on the very next Men Are So Smart.